Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to take a look at parsing strings in PowerShell using some of the functions like split, join, replace, index of, and substring. You need to master parsing in order to manipulate the data in PowerShell, and I stress this. In this example, we are going to pass this string and find the last item. You can see here that I have declared a variable variable has got different methods and properties. Let's go and take a look at first. Dollar string. You can see here the last index of this is a method and also there's another method a substring. A substring these two methods we are going to use to parse that string and find the last value. The last index of it returns an integer value. Okay, let's go and find out. And now this would give the index integer value. It's 25 what does it mean is that there are about 25 characters from here to here but we want from 26th character from here so that's why I put, put plus one here substring basically it extracts this string you can see here that it brings the last item okay what happens if I don't put one here. Highlight and then run this one. You can see here that it brings the black slash. So that's why we need to put one. The next we are going to parse the same string and we are going to use the split function to split and this time I'm using a double uh, backslash here. The reason I'm using double backslash is a backslash is a special character in PowerShell and you need to use a double uh, backslash. And here you can see here that I use uh, the pipe and then I, I'm using a for each. And here you can see that I use uh, the backtick character. A backtick character is a line continuation and then the array value one by one. When you split uh, the string it gives an array value and then this gives one by one. Let's highlight this and then run this one. You can see here that it brings all the values C colon program data USO private and update service. And if you find it's a bit uh, difficult for you, you can also do this way. The same string. And I'm declaring a temp variable and then save that uh, split values. From there, I'm using a for each loop and then writing it to host one by one. For each one from the temp, the temp values, the split value. I'll add this, run this the same effort. Okay, I'm going to clear the screen. I'm going to go and run this one more time so that it's you can see it very clearly. Here we go. Same result. Next, we are going to parse the domain backslash name. Okay. Here, there's a string which is a text site backslash John and I want only the John value. How do, I, how do I do this one? So you have seen in my previous example that I used last index of. I'm using the same thing. So this is the method one. Go highlight and then run. And you see, you can see here that it brings only the John. And also you can use the replace function in order to get the John. And highlight this. This is the method two run you can see here that it brings the John 
the replace value it goes and replace the text site backslash to nothing and then another way to do is that you can split and then take uh, the zero uh, the first index highlight and run see you can see it brings the John when you split the backslash you know it brings the two values okay zeroth index and first index and the first index is, is uh, this is the zeroth index this is the first index so that's what it bringing the John the next we're going to uh, parse the email address and the email address is John Doe at TechSite.org and saving it in inside a variable and then we want the result to be following way John in one line and Do in one line, TechSite in one line and Arg in one line so everything should be on one uh, each line okay I'm splitting this uh, string using the add sign and then taking the, the zeroth index Let's see we are what we are gonna get. You can see here that the zeroth index is John Doe. So what does it mean is this is the zeroth index, this is the first index. So again what I'm doing is this zeroth index I'm splitting into a dot. So it's gonna bring like this. John and Do, like this. And if you do everything at once, like this, it's going to bring like this John Do text site arc. In the next example, we're going to parse a text file. The text file is in this directory, and there are two lines in this uh, notepad, and we are going to go. Uh, line by line and grab only these two numbers okay basically these are two users they are in active directory okay grab this uh, uh, two numbers in in an array and then go to exchange server and assign mailbox for these two users let's go and do it step by step here I have declared a variable and this one gets it from the uh, text file. Let's highlight this. Let's run this. And dollar all. See these two uh, lines coming from the text file. And then this is an, an empty array for this one. And this is a plus uh, equal to. That means I'm saving it into an array. And I'm doing a for each loop, get this uh, one line one by one. And then I'm splitting the information using the space. Here there's a space, there's a space, and I'm splitting using the space. And then again, I'm using another for each loop. And then there is a back tick here, and this is line continuation. And the coming, uh, the array value, if the coming array value like tech then grab it inside the array and and then and I replace the tech to null let's run this one see what is the output okay dollar r See, I'm, I'm able to grab those two users, two numbers. Okay, the next one is assigning a mailbox in the Exchange server. I have Exchange server installed in my uh, test environment. And these two commandlets, I got it from uh, the Microsoft site. And these are the two commandlets. I took it from the Microsoft site. And then I'm looping through the uh, the array value and enable the mailbox. 
So basically, this is the uh, opening a session on the Exchange Server. Later in the video, and I would definitely explain how to do this one, and not in this video, but you know, this is how you need to open the Exchange uh, session on the existing server. And finally, what I'm doing is I'm using closing the session. This is I'm closing the session. Okay, now highlight this and run this. Okay, let's go to the Exchange Server. This is my Exchange Server. I'm going to refresh. You can see here those two values that those two users are assigned a mailbox. In the next example, we are going to learn where to use the join function. Here I have declared a variable and then these are the two semicolon name, the user ID, login ID in Active Directory. This is an empty array. I initialize the array here. And then I'm looping these two values in a for each loop, okay? And then, and and then again, I am saving it another variable, all users, and then get ad users, and then get the information of the specific user, that surname, given name, and proxy address. I'm selecting only the uh, surname, given name, and proxy address. Again, this is an, an array value, so we need to uh, loop through. And this is where I loop through the array and then saving uh, the uh, variables one by one. And then this is uh, the uh, array and then this is uh, the uh, hash table. And finally, I'm exporting this into a CSV file. The proxy address normally, okay, the proxy address is normally an array value in Active Directory. You can see here that, see for example here, this is the proxy address and this is the, the value, uh, the proxy address value. This is an array value. You need to put a join in the code. Okay, this is uh, the join. And then finally you need to export Let's run this, and this is uh, the I'm opening it into an Excel. You can see here you can save like this. If you don't put the giant, let's see what happens. And I'm going to delete the file. Go back here and then remove the join. Highlight, run. Oh, I did not save. I need to finally save this and then export to a CSV file. See, you will get like this if you don't put join. So join is really important. And finally, I use the trim function a lot. Sometimes when you get the information from the CSV file or Excel file, they will add, okay, by mistakenly there, there's a, a, a space at the end. There's a sp you need to trim them. Okay, this is how you need to use the trim function. Okay, run this one. And if you don't put a trim, let's see what happens. I take out the read host.
Thanks for watching guys and you have a great day.